In this lecture, we're going to talk about two different theories that also relate to what causes an individual to want to work or to provide this intrinsic motivation. They're called equity theory and expectancy theory. So first we'll start with equity theory. According to equity theory, a theory, how much people are willing to contribute to an organization depends upon their assessment of how fair that organization is or the equity within that organization and how well the awards, awards, rewards will be distributed among people that participate. If one person gets all the rewards, then other people aren't nearly as motivated to do work or to contribute because they don't feel they'll be fairly treated. Uh, if the rewards are perceived to be giving out proportional to the work, then people want to contribute more so they can, be, they can get more of the reward. Um, however, in practice, the equity, the idea of equity is a subjective thing. It relates to what people are feeling or thinking. So in a lot of ways, it has to be managed by effective communication. Um, it also, equity theory might also explain why some consumers are upset about CEO compensation. Although the job of the CEO can be incredibly stressful, uh, the fact that they take home millions in compensation and bonuses and sometimes even more in stock options is sometimes questioned. High unemployment rates, layoffs, etc., coupled with misconduct of senior executives in some large organizations uh, prior to the 2008-2009 uh, uh, recession, uh, caused the or was partly a, a reason for the Occupy Wall Street protests that arose. Um, to counter this perception of pay inequity, several corporations have begun to tie CEO compensation more directly and publicly with uh, company performance. Because almost all of the issues involved in equity theory are subjective, they also can be problematic. In fact, uh, author David Callahan has argued that feelings of inequity may underlie some unethical and illegal behavior in businesses. Company, if individuals feel like they're not being fairly treated, they may uh, start to behave unethically by perhaps redistributing some of the some of the resources of the organization into their own account. So there's issues associated with it. It's an interesting way to think about how things are working, and oftentimes just treating people fairly and with respect helps them feel like they're treated with better equity. It's not necessarily only financial rewards that relate to this point. One way to think about it in terms of personal input-output ratio in this equity theory notion is that each worker regularly develops sort of in their own mind as this balance of how much input they're giving versus how much output they're getting. And they sort of take stock of their own contribution, that is the input to the organization, um, in time and effort, and they balance that against the outputs or rewards that the organization is paying them in benefits, recognition, promotion, etc. The worker compares his or her input or output, input with output, and develops a ratio and looks at some other person who doesn't seem to be doing anything but seems to be getting the reward, and by that comparison to another, uh, maybe decides that it's not quite fair. Uh, maybe a coworker in another organization, or even on, on average of several people working in the organization, if those don't seem to be in con in, uh, in resonance with what this what you as an individual feel your input output ratio is, then you might start to feel feel disaffected, and it would it would hurt morale and perhaps even cause some employees to disconnect or even quit if they're not close if these input output ratios that people perceive aren't close they might fear they're not they might feel they're not being treated equitably so equity theory something to keep in mind particularly in your teams and groups because sometimes you think people are withdrawing because they're lazy but it could be that they don't think that their contributions are being valued enough and so they withdraw from the group interactions Something to think about in your work groups and even your groups in your in your classroom environments. Uh, another theory we'll talk about next, a different, um, a little different one. It's called expectancy theory, and we'll we'll talk about that next. Expectancy theory was developed by the psychologist uh, Victor Froome, um, and it states that motivation depends not only on how well, how, how much a person wants something 
but also that person's perception of how easily they could achieve it. In other words, you want something, but also if you don't think you're ever going to get there, then you sort of convince yourself you don't really want it. A person who wants something and has reason to be optimistic that they'll get it will be strongly motivated. In contrast, if you do not believe you're likely to get it, like if you don't think you're going to win the Masters Golf Tournament, I'd like to win the Masters Golf Tournament, but I know I'm never going to win the Masters Golf Tournament, so I don't even become motivated to try. So you're not motivated to get it unless you think not only is it worth getting, but that there's some likelihood that you'll get to that end game. So the ability to actually achieve the objective becomes important. So when we think about that, motivation depends not only on how much you want something, but also on how likely you feel you are to get it if you do all the right things to get to that end point and therefore finally achieve the objective. For example, you may really want a promotion, and let's say because you've taken some night classes to improve your skills, um, etc., uh, you, you feel like you have a significant um, or you have made some significant contribution, an invention or something, or a sale that you feel confident that you're qualified to handle that position. Therefore, you're motivated to get it if you feel you're qualified and you might actually get it. So it's something to think about. Uh, a college degree is one of those things. Certain people that don't have a college degree feel like no matter how much they're going to contribute, they're never going to get promoted because they don't have that college degree or that MBA or whatever. And so they go out and if you get those credentials, it'll actually increase your motivation because you feel like based upon expectancy theory, not only do you want the promotion, but you're likely to get the promotion. Uh, some things to think about. In the next lecture, we'll talk a little bit more about the intrinsic motivation and how that gets encouraged by management, how you help other people find that inter -motiva inner motivation, this intrinsic motivation, and push forward in the organization. That'll be our next lecture, lecture 10.